Thank you for tuning in to the Transcend With Anne podcast. This episode is brought to you by our sponsors, BRC Insurance, the number one insurance broker serving the Latino community in the Americas, and Savital Virtual Assistance, serving business owners and insurance brokers across America. All right, all right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Transcend with M. And I am super excited today because I have Rafaela Gareta here with us. And I am very, very, um, I will say, humbled to have her here because she's so busy and she has such an amazing story. She's one of those that you look at her and it's like, she has made it. Yay, go Hispanic community, Latinx, you know, Brazilian community. Um, and I'm super excited for her to share with you her story. So welcome, Rafaela, to the show. How are you today? Hi, Monica. Hello, everyone. Oh, I'm doing great, right? I'm doing great because we are here together. We are going to share a lot of experiences uh, in using my brain and just moving forward, inspiring and getting inspired. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, we have, I know you have very limited time, so I want to make sure that we take advantage of every single minute we have with you. So tell us who's Rafaela, what Rafaela does, and what was... Rafaela's journey coming here to the United States and becoming one of the biggest law firms for the Latino community. Yeah, so I'm Rafaela Garreta. I'm well known here in the Brazilian community as an immigration attorney. However, I'm not only an immigration attorney, I'm the founder of Garreta Law, which is a law firm uh, based in the greater Boston, who which is serving the community here, the immigrant community, the Latino community, uh, in the, not just in the greater Boston area, but all over the world. We have clients from New Zealand. And I always say, like, I have clients in New Zealand. Um, so I'm originally from Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, you know, the girl from the beach. I love my first office was uh, on the beach. Uh, uh, <laughs> And um, so, yeah, Love I'm also it. an attorney there. Uh, so my clients were uh, foreigners, and you, usually they were um, in uh, on the ocean. So that's why I always say that my office um, was uh, on the beach. And 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 I love my country. I love Rio. Uh, I came to the United States when I was 27 because I wanted to pursue. Uh, my career goal to have an advanced degree from the United States. However, I got engaged with the community and decided to, you know, create roots here. And uh, I became uh, a president of a nonprofit called the Brazilian Worker Center, which is the largest nonprofit, Brazilian nonprofit serving immigrant workers in the United States. And from there, I was invited to study um, a law. Uh, here in Boston. I graduated. I was the commencement speaker, very proudly elected as an um, uh, immigrant, um, Latina, uh, Black female. Um, and I founded my, my law firm here in Massachusetts. It was almost seven years ago. Um, we are located in Medford. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Gajeta Law is, is larger, bigger than I am. Today, we are a legal solutions office. We serve our community in different areas of the law. That's amazing. That's amazing. So how was your journey? Like, you know, you already were exercising your law degree in Brazil and then basically had to come here and kind of starts from scratch. So what what was that journey and what did you learn through the process yeah now people say that uh i'm lucky right that i was born with my ass torn to the womb <laughs> uh yeah and and i i say my i'm lucky because i had strength courage and resilience to work my way through Uh, and it wasn't easy because in Brazil, I, I don't come from a rich family. However, I always had everything that I wanted. You know, I was very spoiled, like the daddy's daughter. Oh, my God. 
guilty. Uh, and when I came to the U.S., things were different. I had no longer like parents close to me, my family. Uh, although I have a sister here and a nephew, uh, they they supported me the way that they mm -hmm. they could. But you know, financially, emotionally, uh, psychologically, as an immigrant, we have so many traumas uh, just moving here. But I had this uh, feeling inside. Uh, I, people say that it's guts. I feel that it is God. Uh, so I knew that I I was supposed to be here, and I was courageous to walk my path through the the valley. <laughs> so uh, I had to make a lot of choices. Like I remember, I had a uh, um, a snow boot. Um, I'm Massachusetts, so here is really cold, and during the winter we may have a lot of snow. And yep. I had these boots for five years, and they had a hole. I had to, uh, you know, wrap my feet uh, with plastic um, in two, three socks, so I could I could make it. I didn't have a car. I bought my first car in the United States. I was already an attorney, um, so. I clean houses, I taught people, uh, I translated, I went to court. Like one of my first jobs was to uh, translate, be an interpreter um, uh, before the Department of uh, Industrial Accidents. Mm -hmm. But at night I was cleaning gyms, I was cleaning schools, you know, I worked in the construction and I love it. I still have a, a, a construction company um, yeah, I've done a lot. Uh, and yeah. in the meantime, I was a full-time student <laughs> because I had to maintain my, my visa, right? I was under, um, a student visa and that was really hard. Uh, however, I accomplished things and mm -hmm. I'm here to talk about this and inspire other people <laughs> that, uh, you know, if you, if you set a goal and you have a vision, you can make it. Uh, you know, you are going to have low days, but just just uh, breathe and and continue moving, and mm -hmm. you are getting there. Yeah, it's um, you know, like every time I hear a story about resiliency like yours, is um, it's hard for us to compare to one another or say. I know exactly how you feel because we really don't, we really don't know, like every single journey we go through individually is, it, it, it amazes me how much resiliency goes with each one of them, right? Like I always complain that, oh my God, I had to like had three jobs and my husband had two jobs. So between the two of us, at the first two years we were here, we had five jobs, you know, and, but I never had to experience, you know, what you experienced or what anybody else experienced because we all went through our own um, journeys. But, you know, how does that, how does that experience? Because I know there's so many people going through these experiences right now, right? How does this experience that you lived coming here, having to do what you did, is helping you actually um, resonate more with the community and how that experience, experience made you more relatable to the public that you serve and how does it help you understand their struggle? Yeah, very well uh, said. Uh, you know, people have this miscontact, misconception that uh, empathy is just, uh, you know, putting yourself in one's place it, 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 it cannot be done because we are individuals right we are unique and we all face things differently um however i'm also an immigrant so i can relate to things and and because i was there uh you know not saying that uh, there are immigrants here they they are everywhere every sector um but we know that uh, most are are serving certain types of uh, um, uh, uh, jobs and place, and we we know that the majority uh, is struggling with so many things. Uh, yeah. But I always say, like, regardless, as immigrants, we 
we face trauma just like leaving everything that we know behind family the language the food you know the the weather here imagine i'm from rio here it's cold um all those things um are hotter <laughs> on us mm -hmm. and and also all the struggles that i went through financially um when i sit down with someone um i i want to connect with this person uh, there are people that I will never connect because their values and principles are so different than mine. Mm -hmm. And and but like when I sit with someone and when I decide to uh, represent someone, uh, I want to be connected. And the connection comes from all the experiences that we face as immigrants. Um, also, I feel it has to do with my parents. Uh, my father is a pastor. My mom is a missionary. So um, yeah. every time that I saw them uh, serving our community, they wanted to understand where people come from, why, what is their root, and having love, you know, towards people. Um, but I feel like connection uh, is the key for things. And also one thing that is really important for me now after I, you know, endured so many struggles and and hardships and challenges uh, until now, because I will continue, right? <laughs> we all, but life, mm -hmm. life has always yeah. uh, challenges. Um, but with that, I feel like how can I share? How can I share knowledge? How can I share path? How can I share? Um, uh experiences how can i share uh education how can i share to my community and make my community um better in a sense that they have information to not face the same things as i faced you know do you mm -hmm. know what i mean um yeah. so like today i was speaking with a friend of mine um he's also an immigrant and i was sharing with him like about finance and, and about wealth, about things that uh, I didn't know when I came here because, you know, like as a Latina from Brazil, mm -hmm. majority of us, we are on the survival mode, right? I, uh, I grew up seeing uh, um, violence, uh, yeah. economic difficulties, and we were in survival mode because we needed that money to eat that day. And that is the majority of um, the immigrants. <laughs> um, but having knowledge, how to accomplish this, the next level financially, the tools that we have here in America that, that may enable us to uh, uh, move forward, you know, financially too, because like money, money is also power, right? Uh, and also one thing that I believe a lot, and that is one of the main reasons that uh, I'm connected to you. I'm connected to BRZ. I'm connected to your sponsor and you. Is that uh, we have the sense of of mm -hmm. joining forces and yeah. and yeah. And I I I speak a lot about that to immigrants and clients. And like even though I'm here facing them as an attorney, uh, and I understand my position, you know, uh, yeah. I I still. I, I see I'm still that girl that came from Rio de Janeiro and had to undergo so many challenges as an immigrant and yeah. as a woman too right I, yeah. I, I when I talk about myself I'm like I'm an immigrant I'm a, a woman um I'm of color you know a black female I'm young and beautiful <laughs> You know, uh, I love it. Um, you just sounded like Lana Del Rey. I'm young and beautiful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I am. I don't wait to I love to say. it. I already say. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, you know, high self esteem and confidence is a very important part of the journey, right? So, what can you say uh, to those listening to us today? that you know it's the biggest strength that you can have and 
what are some of the tools that they can use in order to succeed in, in life in whatever it is that they want to achieve? Yeah, for me, uh, again, individual, I believe uh, that uh, we need to believe something higher than us. You know, uh, someone may believe in God, other in the mm -hmm. universe, uh, a higher force, we, or a, a, a higher purpose, right? <laughs> We yeah. need to have that in mind, like there is something bigger than us uh, and that is going to uh, is strengthening us and guide us throughout the, mm -hmm. the, the way. Uh, yeah. I also say that people must know where they want to go uh, yeah. because because if you were just uh, relying on oh, whatever it's going to happen, and you don't know where you want to go, you're going to be lost all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that has helped me a lot is meditation. Meditating mm. really clears my mind and makes me uh, have, be creative and, and, and it enables me to recharge. Also, one thing that is really important, important is connection. You being connected to right people, are go like if you are connected to five millionaires, you're going to be the six, you know, <laughs> and, and having mentors, having people that can, can share with you their paths and share with you knowledge. It's really important. Mm -hmm. Never give up. And also don't take things as like bad because sometimes you may see that you are in a bad situation, but that situation is a situation that is going to enable you learning some lesson that is going to help you in the future so just just have a positive view to every situation that you are enduring or that you are facing uh learn the lesson and move and move um don't listen to others I, also like i remember when i got here people would say oh you are an attorney in brazil here you are nothing you know and I no, I I didn't even reply to them because you know mm -hmm. comments are not going to affect me. Uh, it, it's like a present; you either receive it or you yeah. don't. Even, so just <laughs> you know, you can keep your comments there. Yeah, I'm an attorney here because I may not have a license to practice law here yet. But I'm a lawyer. I'm an attorney here, and it's funny because uh, mm -hmm. so many people that that said that to me when I arrived here now want to, you know, be part of whatever. Oh, Rafael, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, having a connection with a higher force. <laughs> <laughs> this has been so much fun. <laughs> Yeah, they, oh, yes, yeah, oh big God. time, big time, but you know, whatever, uh, <laughs> whatever. Uh, also, yeah. trust in your gut, uh, the meditation, meditation helps you a lot to listen to your gut. Yeah. You know, you know, like this inside of you, you know that you know that you know, uh, just go for it. Uh, mm -hmm. So many inventors in, in the world like they were considered crazy right uh you know imagine the ones that were that created the airplanes when they were say oh yeah we are going to have a machine that we are going to fly and yeah. uh, going to transport people imagine it like you know hundreds of years ago um so sometimes your craziness is the vision of the future that people cannot see um yeah that's that's it <laughs> yeah no i mean i think uh every person has a little bit of uh whatever works for them right but i think overall you know based on on every single conversation i have everybody comes back to say you know connect to a higher power whatever that is for you um you know it, it could be that you you know, you believe in God or it could be that you believe on the energy or whatever it is, but always be connected to something bigger than you. Yes. Uh, because that's, that's, we are beings that are filled with hope, right? And yes. I think it's amazing um, when we believe in something, uh, things start to happen more fluently. 
regardless yeah. of why it is yeah yeah I, I, for me it is really important I, I i already said like i come from a christian family so uh you know i was involved with god since a long time ago i yeah. went to theology school uh and 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 for me that works a lot like meditating uh in a word you know in the bible and and just having that knowledge uh but if it does it works for me you know but if it doesn't work for you try to find something higher than you perhaps it's your own purpose you know like i want to strive because i have a family that i want to provide and i want to provide x y and z and that is a very strong mm -hmm. uh purpose it's not just a feeling because feeling just you know go uh uh, but if it is a purpose, uh, yeah. it, it is with you and, and you are going to remember about that. And that is going to move you forward. That is going to make you wake up earlier or when early, when you are tired because you got home late, you know, that's going to, uh, strengthen you to move, you know, one step at a time, uh, to move forward, to talk to people. Mm -hmm. It's going to make you brave you know <laughs> i i remember like when i wanted to um i i i started a practice here developed a practice in, in my office and i didn't know anything and i needed a i wanted to have a mentor because like mentors yeah. are everything for me so i did a research online and i found this amazing lawyer my style a lot of uh, knowledge and i emailed her like can we have a coffee? I need a mentor and you are perfect. <laughs> and she was okay. I can meet you. Like, you know. I love it. I love it. You know, it's, um, it's so, so amazing because, um, you know, so many people need mentorship and people think that you need to be this amazing person to be a mentor and, and, and not really, you just need to have certain qualities that someone is looking for themselves to, to improve, right? Or someone with some expertise that you would like to learn. Um, yesterday, I actually was uh, on my way to dinner with a, a dear friend of mine, and it was on the way of where one of my mentees is hosting her restaurant. She actually has a pop-up right now because her dream is to get a restaurant. And I have no experience in the food industry whatsoever, but she requested me to be her mentor. And I was like, okay, I'm honored. <laughs> so I've never uh, seen her business physically, right? It's been months. Um, and I stopped by and I walked in and she was like, you're here. And I was like, yep. So I have a date with my daughter tomorrow to go and have, uh, you know, a meal with her and her husband. And she's going to cook a couple dishes and we are going to have my daughter like review her dishes so she can have some social media content. Um, but, you know, all she's looking for is just that person that can motivate her to keep her going, right? She's not looking for anything else other than a helping hand, like give her some motivational advice, give her some, you know, numbers, stuff like that. And it, it feels so good, not just on, on my end to like being able to like give her some advice or whatever, um, but just to see her face light up every single time that she feels supported by someone right yeah. it doesn't have to be me so i think those are the things that we really need to focus on is like how can you change somebody else's life how can you change um someone's trajectory how can you help someone become what they want to become and i think it's such an amazing journey like i have so many people like i admire you i admire so many people and i learn something new every day by someone around me. So I think we are all mentors. We all have the capacity to help everybody else, right? Um, and always do the right thing. I think that's just the bottom line, right? Do the right thing for others and that way you can you can foster change around you because yeah. it would it will only be paid back 10x to to you in a different way that you were not expecting. You never know. 
you never know and, and never be afraid to try and fail you know uh failure uh, is something that um holds people back a lot but uh so many times from this the your failure and the challenges is it, uh that's when you are going to find your way through your breakthrough right i love i love uh mentioning and talking about the lobster growing history story i don't know parable i don't know what to say but <laughs> because i'm in, in new england i love lobsters but like the lobster <laughs> in order to grow yeah the lobster needs to struggle and suffocate itself right um uh, so it breaks the shell she almost died break the shell and then grows right so growing the growing experience um sometimes can be hurtful uh, with a lot of challenges failures uh the 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 thing that i always tell people is i uh, learn from the experience learn and yeah. move and yeah. one thing that i wanted to mention they like, don't want to forget about that that uh, completely changed my life was when i i started having the dimension about time right mm. time is the most democratic thing in the world everyone no matter if you are poor rich everyone has to wait for hours a day mm. the difference is going to be how your choose to use your time yeah. so prioritizing it's really important uh and knowing like oh i only have this hour and this hour is never going back like i will never have this uh, this that is happening now this yeah. time is never going to happen again so do i choose to be here with monica and sharing my information to to her public and the women that are going to listen to me or should i decide to do whatever you know so yeah. prioritizing your time it's so 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 important for you in order to achieve a higher thing so many times your your decision uh is going to be hurtful because you cannot be with your parents or mm -hmm. you cannot be with your family or friends but also like is it worth it to be with these friends you know <laughs> are they in line with my vision and what i want for my future so you thinking and analyzing uh how you use your time uh oh my god it it, it can it can like should, now should i sleep or should i go to this meeting with these people that are going to talk yeah. about things and people instead of thoughts and ideas you know yeah those type of questions like the analytical questions can can really make you go, go uh, uh. well and they say spend your time wisely right you gotta spend your time wisely uh and surround yourself to people with people that will uplift you and make you challenge your thinking right if you yes. stay in status quo or with people that doesn't really challenge who you are how are you really gonna grow right yes. and that's when you experience your circle of friends changing your so the circles that you are around changing the people that you hang out with changing um because you always have to stay you know challenging yourself every single time and i don't know like I don't know how to translate this into English or Portuguese or anything, but they in Puerto Rico, they have a saying that says, mira con quien andas y te diré quien eres. Like, look who you're with and I will tell you who you are kind of thing. It doesn't sound pretty in, in English yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, in Portuguese, con quien tu andas que te diré quien eres. Exactly. Tell me, share with me who you are as around with and I will tell you who you are. Yeah, it doesn't translate well in English for either of our languages. <laughs> but um, it is, it, time is, is a beautiful thing and, and people is a, a more, um, a more a, 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 the most wonderful gift we can, we can have around us. So 
Rafael, I really appreciate you being here today, sharing a little bit about your story, sharing a little bit about who you are, what you stand for, and the work that you are doing for the community is really amazing. So I hope that you keep growing, keep breaking barriers, keep challenging yourself, continue to grow, because you're just starting. Uh, we all just starting, right? And it is a beautiful journey that um, it is worth living uh amongst you and besides you so thank you so much for being part of my life and i hope that now you can bring uh some other uplifting uh, experiences to others as well great thank you so much <laughs> for the opportunity and honor uh, to share my story and my experience with you and everyone who is watching and uh thank you anytime that you need just let me know and i'll be here sharing more and more and more about my path to my goal <laughs> will do will do thank you so much i've had an amazing night <laughs> have a Bye -bye. good night Thank you to our guest, and we appreciate you listening and watching today. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Transcend with M on Instagram, at Monica Duani on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and watch a repeat of this episode in our YouTube channel. Remember, keep resilient, keep growing, and keep being empowered. We will see you next week.